Imagine being born with a bomb on a timer embedded in your body. A cholesterol bomb. If you think that's not as bad as it could be, let me prove you wrong. That's what happens with familiar hypercholesterolemia, a common condition affecting 1 in 200 people worldwide. So, if you get it, you might even call yourself lucky. Well, most likely you are just fortunate in your misfortune. Anyway, in this scenario, your liver decides it doesn't want to deal with LDL, or low-density lipoproteins, the so-called bad cholesterol, allowing it to run rampant in your bloodstream. The outcome? Your cholesterol levels shoot up to dangerously high levels way earlier than most. Picture having the clogged arteries of a stressed out 60 year old by the time you're just 10. Doesn't sound that good, right? Your once smooth arteries start turning into cholesterol clogged highways, with blocks of cholesterol piling up from a young age. It's like your body's plumbing system getting filled with thick sludge. Over time, these arteries become ticking time bombs, their narrowing passageways restricting blood flow more and more. Eventually, this can cause heart attacks even at an early age. Porphyria. Have you ever wanted to become a vampire, but without the extraordinary abilities? Only their fear of light? No? Well, don't worry, maybe you will. One morning, and sunlight streaming through your blinds feels like someone set your eyes on fire. The burning sensation isn't just annoying, it's bloody excruciating. As you scramble to shut the curtains, the damage is already done. Now, even indoor light feels like a less painful assault. Welcome to the severe porphyria flare-up, where your photosensitivity goes into overdrive. Sunlight turns toxic, causing horrific burns, blisters, and scars. Porphyria, a rare inherited metabolic disorder, could turn you into a real-life Dracula. Normally harmless porphyrins build up and wreak havoc, making you a living vampire. A very pathetic one. Stepping outside during the day could leave you with disfiguring burns, as these toxic molecules react viciously to UV rays. And that's just the beginning. Porphyria can unleash intense, ripping abdominal pains comparable to the agony of breaking almost half of your bones inside of you. So not only do you have to avoid sunlight like a vampire, but your body also puts you through torture that makes the idea of immortality a lot less appealing. Imagine this simple scenario. You wake up, do your morning routine, and then you make a few minor memory lapses, like misplacing your keys or forgetting a name. Annoying, right? You chalk it up to aging and becoming a bit forgetful. But then these lapses become more frequent and disruptive. How old am I? Where are my parents? Where am I? You start to ask yourself questions that you shouldn't even be thinking about in ordinary life. Routine tasks you've done countless times become confusing. Conversations become a struggle as you search for the right words. You might even get lost driving to familiar places that become misty in your mind. Those small hiccups evolve into major thinking deficits, as Alzheimer weaves its tangled web of protein plaques and tangles through your brain. Short-term memory starts to seriously decline. You can't even remember what you had for breakfast. In the later stages, Alzheimer's robs you of your language skills, reasoning ability, and even cherished memories from long ago. Your first kiss, your favorite burger, the time you subscribed to our channel, all start to fade. And that's truly horrifying. Eventually, basic body functions are impaired as more brain regions succumb. The person you once were fades away, piece by piece. It's a total oblivion without even a hope of a cure. You just cease to exist the way you did before. In a way, it's death. And it's even more cruel than physical death itself. Necrotizing fasciitis. Any snake lovers watching us right now? Maybe some of you even have snakes as pets. Then those folks will understand this disease the best. Imagine that one day, you're just going about your routine. Maybe you're dealing with a mild infection or adjusting to a new medication. No big deal. You've handled worse. You're thinking about usual stuff. Maybe planning your evening alone or with your significant other. But then, completely out of nowhere, your body throws the most dramatic diva level tantrum ever. It's as if your skin suddenly decides, You know what? I'm over this. I quit. Suddenly, you're trying to live your daily life while molting like a massive snake. Swallowing feels like chewing sand as the skin inside your mouth peels off. Your body, in a bizarre full body donation, sheds pounds of skin that should have stayed perfectly put. With your protective skin barrier gone, you're vulnerable to every pathogen and infection out there. Patients often need to be hospitalized, sometimes even in burn units, because so much skin is involved. The main priorities are identifying and stopping whatever triggered the reaction as soon as possible, because even though snakes are cool, you, fellas, are not designed to be snakes. Hemophilia. Imagine being part of a ruling bloodline with a bleeding disorder lurking unseen in your lineage, passed down through generations like an unwanted crown. 
all because you got engaged to your lovely first cousin. Incest at its finest, fellas. For centuries, hemophilia was a closely guarded secret among European monarchs, known as the royal disease, a special offer coming along with the crown. This disorder could strike from birth, robbing princesses of their chance to properly take the throne due to their inability to survive even the most minor injuries or illnesses without bleeding to death. You can picture the fear and uncertainty that gripped royal families who carry this genetic condition, forcing them to shelter heirs to the point of overprotection, terrified that a simple fall, cut, or nosebleed could be fatal. And all of it, possibly, was because of a stupid act of lust long ago between relatives. Wonderful. Before modern medicine, the constant, inescapable fear of death by bleeding overshadowed every moment. Any accident could be good as a death sentence. The royal children weren't swathed in luxurious garments for fashion, but for safety, because royal medics knew that a single nick could turn into a royal fountain of blood all over the fancy floors. Imagine being handed a death sentence, trapped in your own body, slowly turning into a stone statue, just because of a few faulty genes. One hell of a lottery, eh? That's fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva. In this disease, your muscles, tendons, and ligaments slowly become encased in an extra skeleton of bone, progressively imprisoning you inside your own hardening body, turning you to stone from the inside out. Better not look for pictures on Google, those poor fellows are crooked inside out, with the briefest chance to heal from this horrifying process. The triggers are cruel, minor injuries, or trauma can set off extreme bone growth, like a big, invisible red button that just starts a BOOM in your skeleton. Think of sufferers like characters from an old Brendan Fraser mummy movie, slowly realizing their bodies are betraying them by turning into solid bone. But instead of ancient curses, it's misbehaving genes, sentencing them to a future as living statues. Your body confuses a cut or bruise for a broken bone and tries to heal it by creating more bone matrix, but in all the wrong places. The road to hell is paved with good intentions, huh? Poetic, in a way. This diagnosis means living in constant fear that the next harmless bump or fall could rapidly immobilize whatever joint was impacted. Each small injury carries the risk of triggering more bone growth, further trapping you in your own body, and requiring potential surgery. Thanks to FOP, people are afraid to live to its fullest, due to the fear of becoming living stone. And honestly, you can't blame them. ehlers Donlus Syndrome From stones to clay, imagine having your body that's more flexible and stretchy than it should be, like being made of something soft and pliable instead of bricks. Some Marvel fans might remember Mr. Fantastic, but trust me, it's not as cool as you think it is. Your skin has the elasticity and recoil of a well-worn rubber band. It's as if the universe decided to make your entire skin out of the same material, allowing you to pinch, pull, and contort your flesh into avant-garde sculptures with ease. Ehlers-Danlos syndromes are genetic disorders where your body's crucial connective infrastructure is essentially built from the same material as a stack of Jenga blocks, but without the fun. You're one unstable joint away from your entire skeletal system potentially clattering into crisis at any moment. Theoretically, in the best case scenario, if you sneeze too vigorously on the couch, you may find a couple of your bones uncoupling from their sockets. In the worst, you just fall apart like the aforementioned Jenga tower. Living with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome means navigating your body that's overly flexible, yet prone to unexpected dislocations and instability. Progeria So, hypothetically, you're a parent, remembering the day your child was born. Perfect. Full of life and endless possibilities. A wonderful feeling, eh? But then, far too soon, troubling signs appear. Hair loss, tight and wrinkled skin. Your child's body is aging at 8 to 10 times the normal rate. This is progeria a word every reasonable parent is terrified to hear, especially when referring to a child. You watch as their skin becomes paper thin and fragile, their happiness fades as fat and muscle waste away, and their joints stiffen until they can barely move. Those chubby baby legs and hands turn into thin, bony limbs in the blink of an eye. Kids with progeria rapidly lose the fluidity and flexibility typical of childhood. Their joints and mobility stiffen, making every movement a painful chore. Playtime and running free are replaced by arthritis before they can even leave preschool. In just a few short years, a newborn goes from a pushchair to a wheelchair. You find yourself caring for a child trapped in a 70-year-old body, their youth stolen by this relentless genetic disorder. And then some of you still think that life is fair and that we all get what we deserve? Fools. Fatal Familial Insomnia Well now, I can hear your disappointment from here. Yes, insomnia might not sound as lethal as it is, but don't you dare underestimate the lack of sleep over a very, very long period of time. Just imagine your body literally forgetting how to sleep. 
turning insomnia into a fatal nightmare. That's fatal familial insomnia. An ultra-rare genetic brain disorder that scrambles your circadian rhythms and sleep-wake cycles until they flat out stop working. This isn't your run-of-the-mill sleeplessness, it's unending wakefulness with no off switch. As FFI takes hold, you'll experience terrifying symptoms, panic attacks, paranoia, and phobias that you might have never experienced in your entire life. Slowly, your brain spirals into madness from relentless sleep deprivation. After months of torture, your body and mind start to shut down. FFI is hereditary, caused by a genetic mutation, meaning you could be living a normal life until this ticking time bomb in your DNA detonates. It's a death sentence carved into your biology, with no known cure or treatment. Only experimental therapies might slightly delay the inevitable descent into eternal slumber. So, good night to y'all this evening, rest well, and sweet dreams.